Hey, what's up guys? In this segment, we're gonna cover things we feel that you might need on your cycling experience. That means that you've had your bike for a little while, you've gotten into it, you've had a couple of rides, and you feel, for a good example of this is that you went on a, bit, on a long ride with some friends and someone got a flat, they pulled over, it took you five minutes, you were back on the road already, he had an inner tube, he had a pump, he had everything he needed, and you were thinking to yourself, damn, I don't have any of that. What if that would happen to me? This segment is gonna cover that. We'll show you what we feel you might need. This is things you might need. These are things that'll, that'll make it happen for you if you had them on your bike. Not necessarily something you need to buy exactly the time you get your bike. This is something that can evolve into something else. But these are, the, these are the products that we will suggest. So a saddle bag. This is a small bag. That This is actually a medium size. Small, for example. Really small for the minimalist, for the person that he doesn't, he doesn't carry anything. He doesn't want to carry anything. I know some of them. The only thing that's going to fit in here is maybe a set of keys, a patch kit, one CO2 cartridge. You know, for example, then you got something like this where you can put everything, you can put your wallet, your cell phone, your keys, an inner tube, patches. We're going to get into all that, but this is what you put under your saddle. What's great about a product like this is that when you're riding your bike and you have your, your, your pockets loaded with stuff, like I have a lot of stuff in my pocket now. I got two sets of keys, money. It's just a mess. And you start to feel that after a while when you're riding for a long time. So this will allow you to empty out your pockets, put all your stuff in your saddle bag. Also, patch kit, tire levers, inner tube. So like you can be pretty much nothing on your body, very comfortable riding your bike and have it all in here. And I'm starting off with this because some of the other stuff we're gonna talk about actually goes in here. That's why I wanted to start it off with this. I also have another bag I wanna show you real quick. This, this type of bag has become very popular. It goes on top of your top tube and it grabs your stem all the way in the front of the bike. It, you can slide your cell phone into it and you can touch and manipulate your phone while you're on your bike, answer a call, change the music, whatever you're doing. Shouldn't be riding with headphones anyway, maybe one headphone is cool. But uh, this type of bag goes on top of your, your, your uh, top tube and it's, you know, it's more accessible. Okay, so it, saddle bag, that'll cover saddle bags. Now we get into, this is a little corner of stuff, it's like a bunch of stuff in one little corner, but it's kind of like they all work together. You got a set of tire levers. There's about 20 different tire levers in the market. This is one set. This is fine. Set of three. This is going to help the person who really doesn't know how to do it. Some guys will grab one tire lever and pull the tire off in a heartbeat. Some people need all three. You grab it, you crimp it, you grab another one, you crimp it, you grab the other one, the tire comes off. Tire levers is a must have, very inexpensive product. Will make your day very easy if you or someone you're riding with gets a flat and you have what you need. Um, patch kit. If you're carrying one in a tube, at this level, you should be riding around with an inner tube because if you get a flat, it's a quick thing. Just swap the tube out. It's that simple. When you get home, you patch the tube you just fixed and you have an inner tube again. Uh, you know, some people put four, five, six patches on an inner tube. Some people put one or two. Some people don't patch them at all, throw them out, just move on to the next new tube. It's all personal. It's all what you're into. It doesn't really matter. So inner tube, patch kit, and tire lever. These things right here, they kind of work together. They all fit into pretty much all saddlebags. If you're keeping it the small saddlebag, then you're pretty much not gonna have room for anything else. This is it. But this is very important. Matches up with your saddlebag. Uh, then you go into having a pump. A mini pump mounts onto your bike. Very similar to this. This is a good example of a nice mini pump. They vary from $15 to $45, different features. Mini pumps are really to use on the side of the road. Then this is not the pump you wanna use at home on your really nice high-end road bike when you're about to go out and it's been sitting for a week and you need to tap it out with 40 pounds. They're not the most comfortable thing to do. It's just have a floor pump at home. Mini pump is to help you out when you're on the road. Uh, a huge range of mini pumps from $15 to $45, $50. There is a difference. The, high, the, the nicer pumps do have more features that you can use. They're really cool to have. If you're not a feature person, just get your basic pump and it'll rock and roll and make it happen. Another variation of a pump is a CO2 system, a CO2 inflator. Uh, this is all packaged up, so I can't really get into it that much, but it has a small head with a CO2 cartridge similar to like an old style BB gun or even new, they still work the same way. Uh, compressed air in a cartridge, thread it into the head. As you release it, it just shoots air into the tire. Two seconds, you're full. Minimalists like using this. People who race, people who are in a rush, people who can't be bothered pumping up. This is a reoccurring charge. You gotta keep buying CO2 cartridges, just to put it out there. It's a nice product, but you do gotta keep buying the cartridge. You buy a pump, you just pump every time you're gonna use it. So that covers your pump situation. Uh, a tool. Tool is a funny conversation. 
Because you hand somebody a tool, hey, you should buy this tool, and they look at you like, oh, I'm never going to fix anything. And you know where, where, where we stand on that? This is how I see it. You might not fix anything. You're right. Or you might see like that tool has too many functions. Oh, well, what am I going to do with that? But you could be, let's say, for example, the Greenway again. I'm always going to use the Greenway as an example. Forget about being off-road. Forget about being a 9W up by Bear Mountain. Forget about that conversation. Just your average rider. Let's, let's use the commuter as, as an example. Person on their way to work. Timed it just right. They get there in 47 minutes. They left 47 minutes to, to, to before they got to get to work. And they have a technical. If you have a decent tool, a nice tool, even a regular tool, if a, if a good Samaritan were to stop and ask you, hey, what's up? What, you know, can I help you? They might not have the same bike as you do. You might have, you might, your bike might be just, this, you know, your own thing. If you have your tools, if you have the, your size inner tube, if you have everything that will work in your world, someone's bound to stop and help you and you have everything they need. That's the way you have to look at it when you're buying stuff like this. Will you ever need it? No. But if you do need it, it might be at a point where you really need it and someone might help you and you have it. Break a chain. It happens. I've never broken a chain in the street, broken a chain off road. But, you know, if I had my tool and I didn't know what I was doing, somebody stopped to help me, I would say, hey, I got a chain breaker. And if they're stopping to help, it's because they probably know what they're doing. That's kind of like where the tool conversation falls in. That's how I, that's how I look at it. Simple Allen key set. You know, it'll adjust everything around the bike, no problem. Something like this tool has a chain breaker, has a whole bunch of Allen key sets. It even has a spoke tool, tire levers. This is a multi-tool, anywhere from $10 to $15, up in the neighborhood of about $60, the full range. But this is a good category. Another one also, a mirror. Yeah, mirror is kind of dorky. But in New York City, it's good to be able to see all over the place. And if you're about to make a left or a right and you're not paying attention, you think you're going too fast, Somebody could be coming faster. A car could be coming your way. And a lot of times they're far away, but they're going fast and you can't judge that speed. So quick look, can't stare in the mirror because you gotta look forward. But a mirror is very, 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 very important. Locks. Locks, this is such a, lo such a wide range of locks. I'm just gonna touch on a couple here because it's just too many. Simple cable lock, uh, not very high security. You know, if I were to break down my lock conversation, I'm going to say you could run inside and buy a bottle of soda or some chips and come out. This is not a lock where you leave your bike and you go into school for, for four hours. And you know what? Let me take the time out of the way. You lock your bike in Union Square and go into Barnes and Nobles or something like that. The bike's not going to be there when you come back. It's like just levels of security. You have to think of where you're going to ride, where you're going to lock it. You know, what are you doing with your bike? You know, if it's local, you keep it simple, depending on where you live. If, you, if, you're, if you're locking your bike up downtown, New York City, it's like you need like high-end stuff. You need like super heavy-duty U-locks, super heavy-duty chains. It's the only way. It's, it's, it's cumbersome to be riding around with this stuff, but it's going to have your bike there. Uh, Mid-range, uh, a nice, decent chain, square chain. Always remember, a square chain is much harder to cut no matter what thickness it is. A round chain usually is able to get cut easier. So... Any square chain and, and, and any price level is a good idea. Again, you gotta evaluate where you're locking your bike to see what level chain you are. Uh, talk to your salesperson, whomever you're dealing with, and, and just let them know what's up with your world. Like where you, you know, I'm gonna, I go to NYU, I go to City College uptown. Those are the little things you have to know where you're gonna lock the bike so we can suggest you what lock we feel you need. So this is kind of like the stuff we feel like you need not the must have when you initially get your bike. If you got to budget your world, you spread it out. This is kind of like the second level of cool stuff you might need. Maybe once you get into the riding your bike, once you realize you're going to ride a bike more and you really like it. So at this point, you just got to get out there, ride your bike, be safe, and don't forget to subscribe. We got some more tips coming your way.